So evaluate the risk faced by the company on its peso dominated interest payment in six months time. And how might you hedge against it? Okay, so this is the one. You've got this thing to hedge against. It says in six months time. So what have we got? 300 million pesos. That's what we have to pay in six months time. All right, and uh, I've got another question here, but we can obviously ignore this question. So what we can do then is you can say, well, you could use a forward rate. So the forward rate would be fairly straightforward and you would do 30 million and that's a foreign payment and if you think about it a foreign payment what would the bank do the bank would sell you the foreign money and they sell low don't they so let's go to the six month rate then six month forward rate there's the low 56.585 so 30 million divided by 56.585 is 0 0.53 okay so 0 0.530175 or okay so 530,000 175 176 okay uh, we could fix ourselves into that or we could do a money market hedge. Now, a quick way of working out the money market hedge, you can simply take, so on a money market hedge, we go like that, we go like that, and we go like that. So we've got 30 million, and then remember this is always foreign. So you've got your foreign deposit, which is given here, 3% per year. So divide by 1.0.15. So 30 divided by 1.015 is 29.56, we'll call it. Then we'll take the spot rate. Uh, so again, it's the low rate spot rate, 58.335. 58.335. So divided by 58.335 comes to 0 0.506 or 506671 by the looks of it. 506671 and then times it by our borrowing rate 10% per year. So times by 1.05 because it's only six months. Times by 1.05 gives me 532 uh, thousand more or less okay so five three two double oh five something like that five three two double oh five and so you say right which one would you choose then would you choose the the forward market the, the forward rate or would you choose the uh, money market hedge and this one is slightly cheaper isn't it the, the forward market okay so you would choose that one okay and then it says, identify and discuss the different interest rate risks. So let's just have a look at this. What other things they've got? They've got this fixed rate loan. They've got a variable rate loan as well. But their fixed rate loan is 20 million out of the 24 or out of the 27. So you'd say, you know, work that out as a percentage. And you'd say, look, they've got, they're, they're heavily based on fixed rates 20 out of the 27 is fixed rate so what's the risk of that is that if variable rates go down then they're taking a big risk aren't they because they're still going to be pay paying higher interest rates okay so if variable rates go down then they're still going to be paying the higher rate and then you say right well how long is it fixed for Eight years up. So they're still going to be paying a, f a higher rate paid for eight years. So that's quite a big um, extra risk that they're taking, isn't it? Okay. Um, the other thing that you might say is, well, have they got any low, any receivable loans? But there's no mention of any receivable loans. Um, and the bank loan is over eight years, but the, the variable rates are very low 
compared to the fixed rate, so it would be the opposite of what we've just said, really. You could talk about um, things like gap exposure and basis risk. Gap exposure is basically um, when you've got any assets and liabilities that have interest on them, and they've got similar maturities of similar times when they're going to um, have to be paid or received, and then just see, you know, is there a, a negative gap where the liabilities are bigger than the assets, or is there a positive gap when assets are bigger than their liabilities? Um, so just having a look at that, your gap exposure. Um, so I just write that down. Your, your gap exposure, what you're looking at here is, have you got any receivable, payable loans, same date, or similar date is what I should say, um, and therefore you're going to net off. And obviously what you want to do, you want to have more receivables than you do payables. And the difference between those two is the cost, your gap exposure. But this question didn't give you any um, receivable loads, etc. So actually, you couldn't do it.